gates open at Arapaho Park as we explain some of the unique language in horse racing and some everyday expressions that have their roots in horse racing. We'll also tell the patriotic story behind the iconic lawn jockey statue and how Arapaho Park celebrated the 4th of July with stars and stripes festooned across the racetrack. Plus an examination of the influence of American Pharaoh's Triple Crown. We're showing you the behind the scenes of horse racing and some of sports most majestic athletes. So get a leg up, come on to the track and be ready for the start because the horses are at the post. Welcome to a behind the scenes look of horse racing. I'm Jonathan Horowitz, the announcer at Arapaho Park. Horse racing has a language unto itself and horse racing has also influenced language beyond the track. On this episode of Gates Open at Arapaho Park, we'll be a little bit like Sesame Street and teach you some new words you'll hear when you go to the races. And we'll be a little bit like Jeopardy and explain how certain common expressions have their origins in horse racing. Some of the language that's unique to horse racing, furlong, an agricultural term by which distances of horse races are measured in increments of an eighth of a mile. Six furlongs, six eighths or three quarters of a mile. You can equate a furlong to a city block because when Chicago was designing its street layout, city planners fit eight blocks in a mile. So a six furlong race would be like running six blocks. The racetrack is filled with colored poles to designate each furlong. Two furlongs or a quarter of a mile is the quarter pole. Four furlongs the half mile pole. In order for a six furlong race at Arapaho or any other one mile oval not to start on the turn, the course is extended with a chute where the race begins. When it comes to betting, there are straight bets. Win, place, top two, and show, top three. So what do you do when someone says, as in the Oscar winning movie The Sting with Robert Redford and Paul Newman, to place it on Lucky Dan. And there's exotic bets. Exacta, first two in a row. Trifecta, first three in a row. Superfecta, first four in a row. In horse racing's paramutual system of wagering, odds can change based on how much money is bet. But before the day's races, the track's handicapper tries to predict the odds with a morning line. Now on to some terms that you may already know, but may not know that they were inspired by horse racing. When you start anything, you get out of the gate, derive how horses will stand still in the starting gate, and when the gates spring open, the horse race or the life race is underway. And when you're finishing, you're in the home stretch. Like in a horse race, the finish line is in sight. While it's happening, you may have the inside track, an edge, because like in horse racing, being on the inside saves ground. If you're in contention, you're in the running a term now applied to elections, promotions, or dating. But if you're not in contention, you may need to pick up the pace, like in a race that isn't going as planned. You think you have something to show? Then you're chomping at the bit, derived from an eager horse pulling his jockey while wanting to do more. If you're expected to succeed, well, then you're a favorite. People have their eyes on you and expect you or that blockbuster with Oscar aspirations or that presidential candidate to come through. But if you're dismissed, you're a long shot or dark horse with big odds and a surprise when it comes through. Favorites, long shots, or dark horses, nothing is given and that's why they run the race. When something gets close to the finish, it's down to the wire. Racetracks used to stretch a wire across the finish line to alert fans and jockeys. If you're pulling away, you win hands down, like how jockeys hold their reins when their horse has the race wrapped up. If you have no hope, there's no sense in beating a dead horse. If it's close, there may be a photo finish requiring further examination. If it's too close to call, it may be a dead heat, a term originating in horse racing in the 18th century because a tie in a race or heat meant nothing was decided. Of course, you could always flip a coin, kind of like what took place in 1780 in England between Edward Stanley and Charles Bunbury. It's arguably the most significant coin flip of all time. Stanley won the coin flip and for it, he got to name a brand new race for three-year-old horses. You see, Edward Stanley was the 12th Earl of Derby and so the race became known as the Derby, a mile and a half on an undulating turf course at Epsom Downs that is still held in England each June. 
Now nearly every country, every state has a race for three-year-old horses with Derby, or Derby as Americans pronounce it, in its name. The most famous of these races in the United States, and the most famous of all American horse races, is the Kentucky Derby at Churchill Downs in Louisville, the first leg of the Triple Crown. The female equivalent of the Derby for three-year-old fillies is called the Oaks, also the name of the Earl of Derby's estate. Like the Derby, there are also Oaks races around the world, such as the Kentucky Oaks, Irish Oaks, and American Oaks. Lord Derby will live on in posterity, much like the Earl of Sandwich for his culinary creation of putting food between two pieces of bread and eating it with his hands. Had the famous coin flip gone the other way, Member of Parliament and horse owner Sir Charles Bunbury may have inspired the Kentucky Bunbury. Derby has become associated with other racing competitions not involving horses, such as the Soapbox Derby. A derby can also refer to a general sports competition, such as the Home Run Derby before baseball's All-Star Game, or a soccer match between two local rivals in a city. And clothing, because when American spectators saw the hats that English fans wore to the derby, derby became an American term for bowler. So give some thought to the next time you have to choose between heads or tails, because a lot can be at stake in a coin flip and the next time you're in a board meeting or on a date, because you may be speaking the language of horse racing. Gates Open at Arapaho Park is presented by the His Highness Sheikh Mansur bin Zayed Al Nayan Global Arabian Horse Flat Racing Festival. On the edge of glory in the Watts, the Stud Farm Cup and Brizal LZP with Carlo Lopez looking over the shoulder for the competition that hasn't emerged yet. With races in 11 countries, the Watts Stud Farm Cup will be held at Arapahoe Park on May 24th, July 5th, and August 9th. Behind the growth of horse racing in Colorado, the Colorado Horse Racing Association, the Colorado Thoroughbred Breeders Association, the Rocky Mountain Quarter Horse Association, Colorado owners and breeders of racing Arabians, Cantor, Colorado, finding new homes for retired racehorses. Welcome to Arapahoe Park, I'm Bruce Seymour. I want to introduce you to someone today that I know everyone's familiar with, but I bet you don't know the story. Over my shoulders here are the little lawn jockeys that you see all across the country, but there's a very significant and important story. Originally, his name was Giacomo. Now, the story behind Giacomo is really a sad story, but here's what ended up happening. Back in December, uh, one Christmas day, George Washington decided to attack the Hessens, which were across the Delaware River. Back in those days, during the Revolutionary War, there were many people that would go along with Washington and his troops when they were on a, a war path or whatever during the Revolution. But what they did is one of the slaves that he had was in charge of all of his horses. So when Washington decided to cross the Delaware, he thought it would be a great idea to have his horses on the other side in case everything went wrong and they had to make a quick escape for him and his officers. So it was the job of his uh, slave to take care of the horses and the slave had a young son named Giacomo. Giacomo really wanted to be with his father and, and bothered Washington and wanted to be part of the process. So Washington agreed to let him go, but he was quite fond of Giacomo. So he basically told him, you can go with me, but here's your job. I want you to keep the horses that belong to me and my officers on the other side of the Delaware. If we have to make a quick retreat, I have to find you. Now they went over during the dawn when it was still dark. So what Giacomo's job was, was to hang onto the horses and he was to hold the lantern in case Washington and them couldn't find them if something happened in the weather. 
Well, as we know, the attack on Christmas morning went well. Washington and them were very successful. And at that point in time, there was no need for a hasty retreat. Unfortunately, the weather turned bad. Giacomo, wanting to please his father and to please George Washington, stayed with the horses. The problem was this. The weather turned bad. Giacomo froze. He froze to death. And when he froze, he was still holding the lantern and still holding the horses. Washington felt so bad and so guilty of what had happened to Giacomo that he decided to have a, an artist commemorate him by creating a statue. And he created a statue very similar to this one with Giacomo holding the lantern so that Washington could find the horses after the battle. Sad story, true story. But next time you see one of these, think of Giacomo. Live horse racing at Arapahoe Park takes place from May 22nd to August 16th on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays starting at 1 p.m. Gates open the Miles Massey Handicap is underway. Keep up with the latest online at myhighracing.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Arapahoe Racing, and on Twitter at JJ Horowitz. Miss Dixie and Little Rich Girl in a photo finish that goes to Miss Dixie holding on by the narrowest of margins. Nick Cosmider is a reporter for the Denver Post who's covered horse racing at Arapahoe Park for the last two years. In particular, has focused on the Triple Crown run and how the run to the Triple Crown at Belmont Park has affected the races here in Colorado. What has stood out to you about covering the last two Triple Crowns, California Chrome 2014, just a little bit short, American Pharaoh finally did it in 2015. Well, I think the neat thing about being a general assignment reporter is you do get to stumble onto some kind of neat things. And so it was a pretty cool introduction to horse racing as a reporter to have these two great years. And I think what has just stood out to me is the greatness that people cheer for when it comes to horse racing. I mean, we saw two years in a row this place here at Arapahoe Park, the clubhouse, the track, the, the grandstands, everybody lined up by the paddock, um, just wanting to see something special. They'd come out here those two days before the Belmont raced, and you could just sort of feel that electricity in the air. Um, we got that two years in a row, as you said, California Chrome came up a little bit short, but just the sheer kind of fan volume was something that I've taken away the two years. And then obviously a few weeks ago when American Pharaoh completed the Triple Crown, um, it, it was just pretty remarkable how much people cared about it. It was like you feel that passion. It was almost of a, of a bygone era that people really just cheered, all pulling on the same rope for something great. That's what has stood out to me the last two years covering the Triple Crown. And you're also a sports historian, so familiar with the previous Triple Crown, Secretariat, Affirmed, and then 37 years later with American Pharaoh in 2015. How has sports coverage changed from when, say, Affirmed won in 1978 to when American Pharaoh won in 2000? The sports landscape now is obviously so much more, um, it's so much more full of, of just all kinds of different events, sports, um, major championships. So now the, uh, the crowded landscape means that horse racing maybe sometimes takes a back seat, um, whereas in the 70s it was such a huge uh, event. But now what you're seeing with this Triple Crown is that horse racing still carries that weight, regardless of all the other stuff going on that we have, NHL playoffs, basketball playoffs. Um, when, a, when a horse is bidding for a Triple Crown even now, it, it just shows you how great that event is, that it elevates over the top of everything else. Every magazine, country, every magazine in America, every Sports Channel America is covering that, is pulling on it, and you couldn't find anybody that day who wasn't watching the Triple Crown. It just reminds you of something so far, so far gone when everybody would be watching the same thing, like I said, pulling on that same rope and cheering that for the same uh, finish to happen. You make a great point because there were other horses in the race. I think everybody, even the opposing connections, wanted American Pharaoh to do it. Do you see that in other sports? going for a big land milestone that there's this collective cheering or is it something that's unique to horse racing? What I've found in my experience, like I said, covering a lot of different sports is this is a unique thing. I mean, you had 90,000 people at Belmont Park who were all standing cheering for the exact same thing. Um, like you said, even probably the horse racing connections that, 
They, you know, their horse might not have finished in the lead, but they, you know, they didn't care. It was a, it was a moment for them as well for the sport. Um, you don't you don't see that. You had the NBA Finals here where um, you definitely had probably an equal amount of people pulling for the young run and gun warriors as you did LeBron James and the Cavaliers. Um, there's so many different loyalties in in team sports, whereas with horse racing, we only get this chance once every year as casual fans to see somebody do something great. And so it's almost impossible for people not to want to see that, that happen. It's the human nature in them to want to cheer for the, for the greatness of the sport um, without any other loyalties. And uh, I, I think that's why you see something so special when it does happen, as it happened a few weeks ago. Everybody in America was pulling for American Pharaoh. And what was your sense of the accomplishment as far as being able to do it for the first time in so long, how difficult it was now that you actually saw it happen? Right, and, and we, I mean, you do, that's the thing about it that's so unique. It's just how every year somebody wins a championship in all the major sports. Somebody will win the World Series. Somebody takes the NBA Finals crown. Um, you know, somebody lifts the Lord Stanley's Cup. Every year you have that happen. Um, this, as you said, it's so difficult. 37 years had passed since Affirmed won the Triple Crown. Um, so as a sports fan, you appreciate the greatness that it takes in order to accomplish something like that. Um, you know, I spoke with a woman here during that time who, who was very close to the secretariat camp, talked to the people who covered their run back in the 1970s, and was just kind of blown away by what it took then and how special they were. Um, so she, she, talking to her, you do see just how much you have to go through and how rare it is to find the perfect balance of team, of horse, um, and for it all to come together, we were lucky to see it. What can horse racing do to capitalize on this moment? Well, you know, reading the stories now, you see the American Pharaoh, um, just the thought of him coming to a certain park and racing, um, it, it, the, the horse, uh, the, uh, the track owners, they are just, blow, like it's, it's just for them, um, an incredible chance to perhaps have that horse there. Um, so I think that we need to see these horses continue to race after they, you know, if they win the Triple Crown. People want to see that. It's like seeing a huge uh, athlete right in front of you. Um, that's what they want to see and so I think just continue to market these champions obviously they're not going to run forever that's not the nature of the sport but um, you know to just continue to get that horse out in front of people no matter what the race is people will tune in to watch. What I liked is sort of picking up on what you said the connections of American Pharaoh realized how important it was and that it wasn't just about them it wasn't just about their horse it was about the entire sport so tremendous moves by the trainer Bob Baffert to donate his earnings from the Belmont to charity. Victor Espinosa, the jockey, did the same thing. The responsibility that the people of American Pharaoh have to the entire sport. And how have you seen that be affected here in Colorado with the racing right here at Arapahoe Park? Well, even just the last two years that I've come out, you've seen more people here. And I think more importantly than that, you see people wanting to learn about uh, about the kind of nuances to horse racing. And ever since we've kind of started coming out to Arapahoe Park a little bit more, covering the Triple Crown, um, at the Denver Post, the response from readers is, give us more. We want to, we want to know more about horse racing. Uh, my colleague Terry Fry has done a lot of uh, stories, whether it's um, tracing the, the origins of Arabian horse racing or talking about how the, the betting works and what the future of Arapahoe Park is. Fans are very interested in seeing kind of seeing something special happen. And, and we had a horse here, uh, Get Happy Mister, um, who last year was five for five at Arapahoe Park. And people are always asking me, I wrote a story about him a couple months ago, when is he racing again? They don't even care if it's here, they just want to know. And so when you have, I think horses hold that special bond in people that they want to see them, they just want to see them race, they want to see them run, they want to see them compete. Um, and, the, and people feel a special connection. And you explain the special connection that people have to American Pharaoh, covering Get Happy Mister and meeting some of his connections, owner Annette Bishop, jockey Mike Ziegler, and some of the fans who follow him. What was your sense of the connection that people have to this star horse in Colorado? Yeah, I, I think that there's just a very personal feel um, between the animal and, and those who are close to him and the fans even. Um, I, I think I think horses just because, you know, they're, they seem to be out there doing doing what they love, they're competing, and, um, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not an athlete with all this other 
the baggage with all these other things that that um, interests that they have you just get to watch this horse run it's the most pure form of competition um, is getting this horse ready to, to run a race around the track and I think that um, people appreciate that and when a horse succeeds the way that happy mister has you just want to see more of it and um, and especially when you, you talked about Annette Bishop and just how well she cares for her horse um, she's not pushing it out there to, to win money or to um, you know to try to earn fame or anything like that she, that she loves to see that horse race but she's only ever puts him in a race if he's 100% ready to go and and that's another thing to appreciate in today's day and age of Twitter 24-hour news cycle sports isn't the romanticized way that it was in the 1920s with Babe Ruth perhaps it really wasn't if Twitter existed back then but even with today's 24-hour news cycle and the social media do you still sense a certain innocence when you actually get right down to it with the horses? I think that's that's what people still appreciate. You're a big boxing fan, I know, and you're a big uh, historian of horse racing, and that was it was it was just the romanticism of it all, of of going to the track, of the possibilities that could happen. I think horse racing still holds that for a lot of people, and I think this this triple crown run each of the last two years obviously california chrome fell short but for american pharaoh to win just captured the hearts of a lot of people and you saw mainstream media just devoured it and um because it is it was that special the special combination of trainer of fans of horse that that people don't get to see very often and um i think that the capability that, that sports holds to just tell so many stories is unique and and I think people are gonna only continue to grow as a result of what happened this summer. Well you were right in the heart of it and it was great to read all your articles locally about Get Happy Mister, nationally about American Pharaoh and appreciate the perspective that you were able to bring to such an amazing moment and how it's affected us right here in Denver at Arapahoe Park. Thank you to Nick Cosmiter for showing his sports knowledge and his sports perspective on the Triple Crown and how it's affected horse racing here in Colorado. Good to have Thank you with you, the Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. A patriotic pick-me had an American flag painted on her hip by groom Miranda Rose in honor of the 4th of July at Arapahoe Park. The mayor competed in the Wathba Stud Farm Cup, a series that takes place in three different American states and 11 countries around the world. Gates open, the Wathba Stud Farm Cup is underway with pick-me getting out of the gates the quickest. And it's pick-me, a good-looking winner carrying the American flag on her hips on the 4th of July. It's Pick Me who scores in the Wathba Stud Farm Cup. Pick Me is owned and trained by Mark Powell and was ridden to victory by Michael I. Marino. Another national series that Arapaho hosted on the 4th of July was the Muriel Distaff Challenge Championship, where the winners of regional finals in seven different states, Canada and Mexico, earn a berth to Quarter Horse Racing's national championships for fillies and mares. Gates open the Murray Arapo Distaff Challenge is underway with one famous swinger getting away the best in the yellow silks from gate four. Midori and Smoke along the inside and then Zoom and Daphne, Cadillac, Silver Inlay and Racy Playgirl trying to run on on the outside. They race through the stretch. Cadillac coming through. Cadillac grabbing the lead from Midori and Smoke and Cadillac goes on to the win. A bunch photo for second place. In 2014, ah, Stoli Angel won the Arapaho Cadillac Park Regional and the National Championship Championships at Prairie Meadows in Iowa. Cadillac was second in the national championships for Phillies and Mares. As they come down the stretch run, and here's Madrasita as well with a late rally. And as they come down to line, Stoli Angel and Cadillac Stoli Angel. Now Cadillac, jockey Ramiro Garcia, and owner and trainer Jose Aguilera will represent Colorado in the 2015 National Distaff Finals at Lone Star Park in Texas in November. That's Gates Open at Arapahoe Park, and until your next time out at the races, I'm Jonathan Horowitz. Keep picking winners.